Yeah, we're good. And all good. I'll leave you to it. Welcome to the Adelaide Microsoft IT user group. We're meeting up in February 2024 to welcome all the new cohort that's joining us this year. And for those that are online as well, welcome back. Um, Brett Moffat was here earlier uh, and he does express his uh, farewells. Uh, he is kind of stepping down a little from uh, running one presenting that uh, new user group. Uh, it'll still be around, you know, behind the scenes, getting us pizza and uh, keep making sure things are running. So uh, that's, uh, I'm Andrew Young, uh, consultant at Satellist. Um, so I'll be your host for the rest of the year and sort of <laughs> and hopefully for a longer time. Um, yeah, so everyone had a great uh, time on, if I take it. Christmas news. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you did. Um, so, so, just a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, toilets were outside on your right, first, second height of the elevators. Uh, and then, yeah, just down here. So, we need to, for whatever reason, you evacuate the lawns there where we saw the bin chickens. That's all we need. <laughs> Quick welcome to the country. So uh, we're meeting on the traditional lands of the Ghana people uh, and just like to acknowledge that uh, their elders past, present, and emerging. Uh, yeah, so a couple of things. So just mentioned that rep is down a little. Um, so I'm just going to play them out gradually over time. Uh, I think it's too transparent. The lighting is too bad here. You know, you know, Saints uh, go online. Um, that, that could be Adam. It could be Adam's space in, in the middle there. Nothing confirmed yet. So we'll just watch that space in the middle over the next uh, next couple of months and see what happens. Um, that's essentially black, but yes. Um, hope you all had a great New Year's Eve and New Year, Christmas and all that. I think that is Adelaide um, from. One of those hotels that are still on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> and uh, it's also the, the new year, so yeah, uh, you have the jargon, um, as Ronnie Chang would say, I hope you get rich. <laughs> so the festivities are ongoing for the next week and a bit. I uh, think there's a street party on Saturday in uh, down Chinatown, so it's just that kind of thing. It's just a bit of entertainment. And also, uh, last month I received the MVP award, uh, the Intune category. I I would argue that I really do much in Intune, but uh, <laughs> I guess that's what the content looks like uh, running in the user group and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, been a long time coming, I guess. But it's not something that you aim to do. I guess is what they're trying to make you think. Uh, the the, the community is meant to. Nominate you. So, yes. So, yeah, so moving forward, there should be a lot more uh, interesting content and responsibilities, I guess. So, uh, to watch that space and yeah, see what, what kind of new things come from that. Uh, well, I'm going to just jump into. What's the noise news? So it's been two, three months since we last met, or the month had a session here. Um, so in the Azure space, it's going to focus on the APDs and the other Azure virtual desktop. Um, so it's now available for this Azure stack HCR, so hybrid converged infrastructure. So it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hybrid Azure and servers. So you've got your server rack and you've got the Azure service that's coming in cloud. So you're running Azure services, but it's what we're doing in the hardware. So this reduces latency and any outages. So it's a bit more, a bit more uh, robust, I guess, for your on-premise reasons. So you might have an application that only runs on-prem, or you need better latency than the networks all from certain places. So that kind of addresses those pitfalls. Uh, not too certain on the building is slight for that, but um, if, if, you, if you touched AVD in the past, you know, roughly the Spending in hardware and 
all that stuff. So yeah. that uh, also confidential VMs using this Intel TDX CPU um, in Azure Virtual Desktop as well. It's a public preview. Uh, it's for like the top secret uh, <laughs> secret school business. So I um, imagine most of the government uh, tenants will have seen this running in the background. Uh, Azure AI. Um, under the Azure banner, so we'll keep, keep it that way. It is that AI, but they're now uh, expanding this open AI service that they've got, and they've uh, these pre canned uh, text to speech voices. So they've encountered these before in other writing systems. I know Mac OS has a few uh, great voices, yeah. um, but it's the, I think it's, yeah, the much more responsive, yeah, generative and responsive in their. In their um, Behaviors, but it is multilingual. Um, I think there are six main voices that we picked up. So, yeah. Microsoft is always finding new ways to use AI to increase creativity, productivity, and skills. Our collaboration with OpenAI and the power of Azure have been essential to this journey. With the advent of high quality, human like AI voices, industries and applications are being transformed, making it easier and more natural to interact with devices and services. Today, we are excited to announce that OpenAI text-to-speech voices are available in preview in both Azure OpenAI Service and Azure AI Speech Service, which gives you more choices and variety for business scenarios such as voice assistant. And now, you can explore six new pre-built OpenAI voices in Azure AI Studio's Playground or Voice Gallery alongside over 400 out-of-the-box Azure neural voices across 147 languages. Choose a voice with OpenAI label and listen to its voice samples. Recycling and waste reduction are essential components of environmental protection. وَهُوَ يَنْطَوِي عَلَى تَبَنِّي مُمَارَسَاتٍ مَسْئُولَةٍ لِلْحِفَاظِ عَلَى الْمَوَارِدِ الطَّبِيعِيَّةِ وَالْحِفَاظِ عَلَيْهَا وَتَقْلِيلِ التَّلَوُّثِ وَتَخْفِيفِ آثَارِ تَغَيُّرِ الْمُنَاخِ you can choose from a diverse range of options to meet your needs, as all OpenAI voices are available in 57 languages, including both standard formats and HD equivalents. OpenAI voices are also available in Azure Speech with enhanced SSML support, giving you the power to fine-tune your voice in real-time SDK or Azure AI Studio's Audio Content Creator. Let's take Audio Content Creator as an illustration. We'll use OpenAI Voice Alloy as an example. Enter your own script to hear the generated audio. Today is October 12th, 2016. He played this classic role in more than 70 films during his career. He was associated later with the SNA Film Company. You can further refine by adding breaks or customizing how specific words sound. Replay the audio and hear your modifications in real time. Today is December 10th, 2016. He played this classic role in more than 70 films during his career. He was associated later with the SNA Film Company. Visit ai.azure.com and try out OpenAI's incredible voices today. Makes the stuff going around. So, the, the, the uh, ethical use of this stuff as well, you have to consider. Yes. Yeah. I wonder if I could frame my voice module in this service. Because I saw many videos and they use, use, they use some like anime or gaming yeah. character as a sample and frame their own. Yeah. Voice. It was, with that, if you do have access to the voice model, you can give it samples of your voice and it'll train up for that, I imagine, and it'll just get better at it. Yeah. So, so, so things like Siri, like if there would have been a woman on the other end just recording random words and then teaching, and over time it's going to be able to just build out of that, a lot on top of that by itself. Um, it's just like when, how much invention. Uh, there's also native documents that put the personally identifiable information in 
logical reduction and summarization now. Which uh, um, essentially what is quite new. Azure AI language offers PI detection today to identify and redact sensitive information within unformatted text. These days, we observed increased demand for this offering when more customers start building apps with large language model. However, to redact PI from native documents like Word docs and PDFs, customers need to take days or even weeks to build a reliable solution to crack their docs and recreate the doc post redaction. It is error prone and slows down the time to value of their applications. To address this challenge, we are introducing the built-in support for native documents for PI detection. With this new capability, the service accepts a native document as input, extracts PI entities, and generates a redacted document in the original format as output. It also optionally returns the identified PI entities. For example, imagine Contoso has many medical reports like this one, which contain various sensitive information. Contoso wants to redact the PI info from the doc before archiving for compliance. With one call to the new document-based PI API, customers can effortlessly obtain the redacted document within seconds, bypassing all the tedious steps outlined earlier. With this new capability, customers get their desired output swiftly, precisely, and without the hassle. It streamlines the redaction process, accelerating the time to value and lowering the total cost of ownership for our customers to build a data anonymization solution to secure sensitive info. Uh, these are the weekend. Introducing Assistance API, a new feature in Azure OpenAI service. Discover the future of building intelligent, dynamic GPT-powered AI assistants within your applications. Leverage the latest GPT models, define custom instructions to tune the model's behavior, and leverage tools and knowledge to respond to user queries. Incorporate external data like product specs and sales data in multiple file formats using knowledge retrieval. Code Interpreter writes and executes code on the fly and performs advanced data analysis in a sandboxed environment. Function Calling connects your assistant with external APIs and lets the model smartly decide when to use those functions based on the prompt's context. You can even store and access conversation history with threads to preserve context, even through lengthy interactions. Build the next-gen AI app for your organization and bring cutting-edge capabilities to life faster with Assistance API. Visit aka.ms slash AOAI service to learn more and apply for access to the Azure OpenAI service. AI user group at all? I'm aware of the thing though. There might be something a lot for them. We'll get a first line view. But, um, yeah, I'd be interested to see uh, whether they're running this stuff. All right, intro ID, formerly known as the Jura ID. Uh, we've got a certain base to port now in initial access. So, an extra factor for when you're doing your multi factor authentication. Um, uh, famous scripture, yeah. Um, so you need to be certificate and then your OIDs. Uh, so it's once you've done your username, your password, you've probably got your phone or hardware token, and you've got this as well. So in the case of open certificate, you push out and what's all on your device and meets that, um, custom OID. Uh, Enforced automatic rollout of uh, MFA related mutual access policies. Uh, there are over 500,000 tenants since they announced in November. So that's an MFA for regular users, your admin accounts, 
I'm not having a fancy espresso default policies that get turned on by the vault now, um, which is better than having nothing turned on because yeah, you don't want that. Um, and it's still on top of the superior defaults, which may get registered for MFA anyway. So I wouldn't touch too much of the pilot. It's still it's still in here, but um they didn't expand availability for it. Um, so now it is available to a lot more people or places. Uh, they've got rid of that pesky 300 seat on purchase. Uh, so now anyone can get you know, one or two seats just to, just to play around with it. Uh, and they've also let you use your old Office 365 licensing, to make sure it's enterprise E3 or E5. Uh, and it's obviously available for the middle, you know, highest tiers of business and education licenses as well. Uh, and on, uh, yeah, you can buy it through the tenant directly with Microsoft or through your cloud solution provider departments or any distributors that you want to work with. And it's also extended to the Windows Copilot. So there is a Copilot on Windows in Hasbar. If you've got the latest build, um, you see here there's a little yeah, at the top there, top right, where you can switch between your work account and your web account, just your personal account. So your work one's going to have all the protection, the security behind it, the web one won't have as much, if any. Uh, so be wary when you paste into that uh, chat there. Uh, but yes, the, this will tie into yeah, the Microsoft 365 apps, uh, and you've got Copilot for 365, and you can just interact with it there. Uh, I have a heretic question. Heretic. Yeah. <laughs> Is that available to use it on Mac OS? The Copilot for Windows? No. Copilot for Microsoft 365 would be, I, I assume it's out for the Mac uh, versions of the application. Otherwise, it definitely would be available for the web. Yeah, I thought there was a web, web, web application. Uh, uh, I'm, wondering I'm if not I sure if the, the applications have been pushed out yet. But those features. I will, yeah, I'm gonna I will find out for you, but uh, yeah, that's all right. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so on top of that, the so what was known as Bing Chat is now just Copilot. You need some more, uh, and a better than HTC or Copilot Pro, which is a, a paid version of that Copilot. So it's it does similar things like Chat GPT plus with Doom, for example. So it's a big comparison, you've got your basic uh, chats and all that stuff, some uh, image generation and some use plugins, but in the pro version, you've got a lot more, I guess, uh, interactions with the AI. So your limits to only 15 regular free, and you've got up to 100 image generation opportunities for the pro. Uh, one's using the planner, one's using the DAC Dolly 3 um, system in the background. So that also lets you use Copilot in the like home and personal office space design and things that you like applications as well. So yeah, you can't get it in your business, get it on home. <laughs> uh, yeah, so in 365 itself, we've got uh, the apps themselves and Copilot, it's Copilot, are uh, available now on Apple Vision Pro. And for those on the know, that's this thing. Um, so it's an augmented reality headset that Apple was supposed to release. I think um, I assume that's the US pricing. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And without tech tax. Oh, oh, yeah. Of course. Did really. <laughs> so it make you buy a charge cable separately? I'd say. Surely not. Um, yeah, so that. Similar to like what a HoloLens and other VR headset would do, you get access to an apps and all that through there. So I don't see this being really uh, everywhere. So give us some time and see where that goes. Um, so we've got support for the legacy VSD files uh, in the for the web. Uh, okay, you just need to upload these OneDrive first, uh, but if you've got any problems, pre 2013, you can now work on them using the web client in and that's regardless of your client file plans to on the cloud. Uh, Intune, there's now a new UI, so they've refreshed the um, 
admin center. So you've got these uh, funky squares or rectangles, uh, what's that shading and coloring the text has changed as well. And uh, they probably removed or moved stuff in the menu again and again. So uh, just to get be accustomed to where everything is. Uh, is what it is. Um, also, the enterprise app management add-on is now generally available. So this is one of those add-ons that aren't part of you know, into suite or your plan two, or it's part of, sorry, it's not part of plan two or out of the box. So you do have to pay an extra for it uh, for the device for lunch. Uh, so this is a catalog of in 32 applications that I've had a curated or that kept up to date to a certain point. Um, so, kind of, it used to need for you to package your own applications. So, they should be readily available in that catalog for you to push out to your devices. Um, and then there'll be yeah, various versions of languages for as well. Right, uh, so the teamwork space, that's SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams, Viva, et cetera. Uh, we've got the signatures now, natively in SharePoint, so you grab your documents or your PDFs and get uh, people sign up within the PDF, so you have to use third party things like DocuSign or whatnot, or any approved processes, it's just built in. Uh, so that's, that's nice. A lot of people know I love that one. Um, the MP6 Live Backup is now formally in public preview. So anyone can jump on that one. Uh, that is OneDrive Exchange and SharePoint data being backed up natively within Office 365. So it's, it's faster restoration. It's, it's in place. So you don't have to go out and copy it back in from an external cloud storage um, somewhere else or on ground storage. So, See how that goes. It, it is open. Like they've got an API that will talk to popular products like Beam and Backup and all that. The hand up. Yeah. So kind of requesting signature. Is that like just when you go and you need to like in that screen manually request someone? Can that be like a automated process and like dynamic people at it? Looking at this screenshot, it looks like that's the manual step. I wouldn't go. The past and then yeah, like a connected to the power automate, for example, to get it to go to specifically for that room or maybe you've got a form elsewhere to enter those details. So you get a X and Y, you put their contact details in there and hit go and then picks on the flow and sends off the document to those people. So yeah, I imagine this will be extensive, very extensive. Uh, so, yeah, one premium we did touch this very briefly last time. Um, so, it uh, was SharePoint syntax. So, now you have this uh, AI related um, service on top of SharePoint, and uh, they're giving you document translation uh, as a nice little thing there. So, we'll get the document library, select your document, and uh, pick the language point. And uh, it will do it for you. So I think there's a couple of really models where you go get the license for you, do a pay as you go, get an Azure subscription. Uh, I guess uh, I believe the public will print there. I think it's out of preview now, but you can have a little bit if you've got the pay as you go. Uh, yeah, so the files tab or files app in Teams on that kind of side is now replaced with the OneDrive app. Um, so just to be more consistent across all of their interfaces, we've now got access to your OneDrive files and whatnot from Teams itself. Nothing too, too groundbreaking there. There we go. I see what I've done here.
any questions while I uh, deal with this technical difficulty? <laughs> Those new features that you showed with Intune, are they part of the core of like licensing? Is that or is that like no, it's not that is that is the add-on yeah. add stuff, yeah. yeah. So it's either standalone as an add-on for I think it's three dollars fifty per seat, or uh, it's part of that suite, which is like fifteen ish um per seat. This would be that uh, sync message I saw before I came in. <laughs> but it make changes, did not sync up. I'm just going to break the slideshow for a moment. Still sharing. Okay, uh, so yeah, the new Teams client is now available for virtual desktop infrastructure. So, you know, RDS, Citrix, and all that. So, you can now have the nice lighter client. Got some custom channel announcement uh, backgrounds. So, like the feed, you do need. Premium mobs also for this one, so you can generate an image and it's into your announcements. So it saves you going and trying to crop an image that fits into the dimension. Uh, nice to have. Uh, yeah, it's a licensing. Yeah. Uh, or on the music side. Uh, there's now loop components of channels as well as just the direct chat. So do all your tailings and your vote, voting polls and other live components that will go across the application. So that's actually a change. Uh, and a lot of people that have been with that one. Um, it's a shame that the actual loop app itself workspaces don't actually have a, a group behind the scenes. So, you know, there's no tie in like a team and a workspace. So that might be another thing that they'll fix down the track, hopefully. Uh, but at the moment, yeah, I think I did see if owner of a workspace leaves your business, you can't actually be assigned your ownership of that workspace. So I think that's where the, uh, the flags are being thrown at the moment. Uh, there's virtual appointment webinar and town hall templates edits in couple of the teams add in so where you normally create a team meeting. Um, stuff has changed in the last few years. Now you've got access to these options here. Uh, I believe town hall used to be live events. Uh, we'll keep changing the name so it's a new track. Um, I believe that's it. And virtual appointment, I think, stems from like a booking list. Booking system kind of uh, approach to your, your meetings. Uh, if you're using any other thing, any of those uh, products, then you will see that show up in your Apple client. Monthly meeting views. I think in the past, we've always lamented that there's not enough people on the screen at the same time. They reduce the number of people in the screen instead of so you have you know, four, nine, or 16. People instead of 49 or whatever the maximum is these days, I think you'll leave those more like shapes and so you can drag them around or something. Um, or they, they automatically move around in certain ways. So, uh, but it, it's, uh, you don't need that many. And I think it's even if they haven't got the video ones, it does still show up if you have to move, but then it's selected. Finally, forward chat messages. <laughs> no brain ever. Um, and it's, it's a while to add in replying to the chat messages, so it's, it's nice to have. Um, so yeah, any message from channel, uh, channel you can, I think it's just chat, so you, you can click the uh, ellipses and go forward and then it's like who you want to go to. So it's 
yeah, it still shows like a preview or a link to that chat itself, um, but the message should be out. So, yes and no for me. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, either the, the copy the link or you pull it down. So, I'm telling you, someone's done that to you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it does. <laughs> can you forward external people stuff? So, like, if you can all of your replies to them into the good state I would expect when you hit the forward button, when it pops up with the people picker yeah. component, um, it won't or shouldn't show external guest units. Um, I'd have to test that. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, it does seem like a, a data leak issue if that is a thing. Um, yeah. uh, it's mesh went GA, so your uh, virtual or interactive immersive space so you can have your avatars and go in your fake meeting rooms <laughs> uh, where you have no legs. Um, it literally all hands because you don't have fridge. <laughs> no video audio just for some reason, but uh, yeah, so if you if you got like a uh, it said that support that stuff, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's your thing. Uh, cool. Uh, new Microsoft Applied Skills. So, if you're not across what Applied Skills are, they've added a new type of uh, credential um, to their Microsoft Learn approach. So, instead of getting a certificate, doing an exam, and doing an assessment that is free and online to uh, target specific uh, skill sets. So, here are five new ones that were added last month. Um, so Nice to nice to have, but yeah, I I get one of them, and uh, there there is no chill. They they give you a nice time limit, up two hours, and uh, they just they don't care how, maybe how you get there, but there's a long standard result uh, meets their criteria. Get a nice tick there. Certifications, these exams went into beta last month as well, so people who are kind of data or dynamic is essential. You uh, a look at these ones. Um, maybe they'll come out of beta two, three months after they go live and then get results a day or so after that. Hiring uh, Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1 month. Uh, we've got some classic Azure Cloud Services, machine learning, severe, and, and videos here back uh, retiring in August. And old Dell is going away. Uh, Seventeen. Don't know what Dell is. That's that um, people people app in Office three six five that gives you random uh, documents that people can work with. Um. Uh. What does Visual Studio retiring for that mean exactly? So that version of Visual Studio that runs on the Mac OS, uh, that version retiring as it's not being supported oh. anymore. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't run just it on Mac, so I don't I know. think that's specifically, Microsoft had two Visual Studio products for the Mac platform. There's Visual Studio for Mac, which is the old .NET framework development, like development, so using .NET. Um, and then there's a new, like, Visual Studio that's uh, like an Electron app. So it's like the standard um, Visual Studio experience across modern platforms. I believe that one's staying as the, the legacy of Visual Studio development uh, environment that's going on. Uh, it, it's still super good. <laughs> but, um, and then, yeah, and the biggest thing is support. There's some other older products. So I think it's don't be using Office 2019 or Windows 2012, also the 2012 anymore. Um, or 08. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some other 2013 products that are coming out of support. And, Yes, so Visual Studio Code, yes, which is the other one, is still staying around. It's a standard like code edits that the other one was a standard. Uh, like Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code are two different sets. Yeah. VS Code is the lighter version. Yeah, yeah but yeah. The, I guess there is a still one product just called Visual Studio, but to like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like Windows version or Mac version or Linux version. It's like, yeah, but be before that, well. there is. Uh, one called Visual Studio for Mac OS. Uh, 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Super cool. Uh, I was going to check the order of that animation, but <laughs> these are the other Adelaide Pixel groups uh, relating predominantly with Microsoft products. Um, they're all on Meetup as well now. Daniel's finally come on board. Got the call. Uh, he has started the Copilot Pizza Group, uh, which had its first uh, session last week. And uh, he's got his example six five Pizza Group next Tuesday at the same time. What's coming in terms of events? The Australian Biz Apps Music Group has an online session. Yeah, hey, would you like to talk about that one? So we did it somewhere. We'll be giving our head create a plugin action that calls Copilot to assess first that linked records and field splits. We haven't done it yet. So it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be um, some stuff in developer and also some stuff you can do just want to kind of understand how they extend it. It should be exciting. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll send out links to all the events and other you know, talk about today. Um, yeah, uh, as the digital workplace conference in New Zealand in the next month. Uh, there is a new apps AI technical summit as well, which I couldn't find the, the link to again after I somehow signed up to it. Uh, there's a bunch of tech accelerators, so you profile it, uh, you get to the security related topics there. Uh, it's a fabric conference in March. And I uh, yeah, obviously the power platform conference uh, later this year as well. Um, I think I've written there. Yeah, so Microsoft should be doing an AI partner related uh, roadshow across AMZ. Uh, it's the, the say it's five stops, so a little, a little bit like they might stop now, play, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that goes usually. Um, and then for us, uh, our user group, I'll have Dan Ferreira coming next month to talk about Intune, uh, Andrew Lyon, Lee, and Vendron uh, Padmanam <laughs> coming in uh, April. So I'll have the his apps uh, 2024 will explain if one updates or other cool features that we uh, hope to see later in the year. Um, uh, yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, so QR code if you are interested in presenting or if you have any topics you'd like to request, uh, fill in the form. Um, so, yeah, I've, you know, I've got a few speakers to juggle around, but if, yeah, if you want to talk about anything really, uh, it's a good chance to do some public speaking. Uh, yeah, uh, we should get out there a little lab. Um, December it might be a bit of a joint group session um, post month 2009, which is a big conference every year. So we'll see what we'll do for that one. Maybe relaxed and fun. <laughs> and we're back to you. Much here, so there's my stuff if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, the next one, whatever it's called these days, etc. And then there's red stuff. We'll keep that now. Uh, I feel like it's QR code though. I'm trying to get something. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll get Adam's details uh, back on if he ever comes back. Things, Ross. Does that work? I should. That's wild. I'll leave that up in the next minute. Your phone gets crypto. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, there's that feedback link. Uh, that's been there forever. I don't actually know if it works, Adam. Tell you why. I reckon that's linking to a Microsoft form in my own extended. Uh, <laughs> no notifications. So we don't know if there's been any feedback ever, but usually people will be uh, very you know, verbal on uh, things and social media anyway. Save so message on LinkedIn. Yeah, pretty much. Do that if you want. Or, or I'll check. I'll check that. Or use the uh, the other, the other, the other thing and you know, expressions in there instead. Um, yeah. Well, that's uh, pretty much the things I had. Uh, what's new? What's coming? 
Um, obviously, I didn't do much more lined up and have anything to speak at this month. Uh, it was more of a ease back into it, new year and all. Um, and yeah, try and try and draw on the way just for the next or subsequent session. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you want, um, let me know if you want to present or if you have any topics in particular or anyone that you know would like to come to one of these sessions or any of the other sessions that I um, before. Um, so feel free to share around if there's uh, yeah, at least small. We want to like grow that to a community app. So um, start me. Thanks, Andrew. <coughs> yeah, questions. <laughs> Sorry, I missed all of it. Three boards, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, 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 sure what it is. Uh, I'll, I'll share out the link to that. Share that as on the WordPress site and spam you with it. Uh, what's the Power BI group above? The Power BI is a better idea of what that is to explain it, but it's more like it. I love what's dashboards, uh, graphs, reporting. So these guys run a almost monthly um, user group. They'll go through so um, like best practices of what they're what they're using these days, but uh, it's transforming and displaying in data essentially. And um, I'm gonna stop talking about it because I've no idea what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's yeah, graphs essentially. That's yeah, I think that's like some business, business and that. And it's, it's, yes, it's just the business insights or in business intelligence, but that's one thing. Um, but that does tap into things like Excel, SQL databases, uh, Dataverse storage in our platform as well. So there are multiple ways of giving it data to then represent much digestible methods or uh, visuals. And I guess a lot of executives like all of those pretty pictures that give you good information. And they're also interactive to the really big markets and show you uh, information. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. This will be the right stage. Are we easy? Ask her. Been running lights every yeah. day. That went uh, a lot quicker than I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> We all get an early minute, um, but yeah, hopefully the sessions will have uh, a lot more uh, speakers on. Might even have multiple speakers on at the same time as you saw. So yeah, you're all green now. You can <laughs> get on with the rest of your days. Uh, and at the earlier time, just make it a lot easier to avoid traffic if you need to get out of the city. Good answer. Do you want to talk about? Uh, the AI no, that's what it's called. That's what it's called. Yeah, it's not in Adelaide. Yeah, Microsoft AI. Yeah. So that was the roadshow. Uh, yeah, I figured it would be in Adelaide. It's, it's across a and usually the first year. Yeah, they're hitting uh, New Zealand, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, and Brisbane. Do you happen to be in the city? So you can talk to yeah. when? When exactly? It's all spread out. Um, in the next two months, though, so April, March, April, May, I believe. And I think in Auckland, Ben, May. May? Right. I can't remember. They yeah, their last or... um, I'll get you the dates. Yeah, yeah for sure. That's not there. Yeah. Anything display it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super but excited. It's a partner focus, though. Partner focus and there's, yeah, there's your public or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that may change. Depending on interest. I mean, well, their IT will last. It's very popular. That was what, 3,000 people? 4,700. 4, what? No, 3,700. Oh, yeah. It's in there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Large number of people went to yeah. Sydney to go to the AI tour. I, I mean, the outside, which is too late. Yeah. Um, but it was the first big event from Microsoft back in Australia since unprecedented times. Uh, <laughs> Cool. Well, I won't hold you guys up any longer. Um, it will be the candle recording, and uh, I will see you guys next month on the if, if yes, was the six is when the co-part one is on. <laughs> so.
multiple visits to Michael. Obviously, he shall be at the slaughter again. Well, no, I didn't didn't want to do too much in the same like week of opening. Exactly. Uh, have his his uh, large audience, but um, yeah, there's uh, looking at the months. Uh, there are some five week months that we can stagger out and to avoid any uh, public holidays. I should say, but I don't think there are any other user groups on this time slot. Um, I haven't heard any IP in the group. Yep. Having used the funders on Thursdays, anyone? So, should be any pleasure. Yep, excellent. Yeah. I'm out of content. Um, <laughs> 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 Thank you, Andrew. Oh, no. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's still Peter out right there. Feel free to hang on, um, clear it out, and then uh, you're going to hang around for. Yeah, I'll be here for a bit longer if you want to chat about anything. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, go on. Brent responded. Hello. What is Pete doing? Yeah. You too? We'll be around. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy. See you later. Give me the context. So, yeah. Yes. Um, um, well, a few times, I guess, so maybe four or five years ago, the same good thing. Oh, yeah. I don't know, like, yes. But then, yeah. maybe more.